Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another session uh, at JuliaCon. So today we have Randy, uh, and he will be talking about what's new in tidyourplots.jl. The floor is yours. Okay. Thanks. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Randy. Uh, I uh, a little bit about me before we start. I am a former, at this point, epidemiologist. Uh, I currently work. Uh, as the director of analytics at a company called Presage Group in the Toronto area. Uh, we do consulting using Julia for hairlines uh, and related clients. Um, these are pictures of my dogs and my chickens. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to say thank you up front because I ran out of time last time to say thanks to our contributors, uh, Dr. Singh, as well as uh, Alex, Connor, Daniel, Pavel, Jeffrey and Robert, uh, who have made contributions over the last couple of years to this project. Um, so tidier.jl, uh, of which this project is a part, um, is a re-implementation in Julia of the Tidyverse. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Tidyverse, um, I will say it's the best reason to still consider using R. Um, it's a comprehensive co connected set of packages for reading, wrangling, and visualizing data. Um, tidier.jl has already implemented a lot of the tidyverse, including tidier data for the main data manipulation packages, tidier db for database interfaces, which you can see more about tomorrow on the main stage at 140. Um, this talk is about uh, tidierplots.jl, which is the ggplot2 implementation, uh, and there's also uh, a wider summary of all of the packages we've developed uh, tomorrow at 2.30 on the main stage. ggplot, uh, depending on who you ask, is a part of the tidyverse. It's uh, a package for data visualization, and the general idea of ggplot is that uh, we map uh, parts of our data to aesthetics uh, to create um, data visualizations. So you build these up by adding the layers together. So here, here's an example of a very simple ggplot uh, that takes the data set mpg, maps some of its columns to aesthetics, uh, and says map those as points. Uh, and you can build up more complicated uh, versions of these visualizations by adding more and more layers to your plot. Tidierplots.jl re-implements this in Pure Julia. Uh, the way it works is uh, we've defined a set of structs that uh, correspond to the ggplot concepts, like like a full plot, a geom, a, an aesthetic mapping, etc. We have functions that look uh, superficially like the ggplot functions that generate those, uh, and we have definitions for operators um, that add those together. Um, behind the scenes, we're using Mackey's spec API to make the plots actually happen. It's already quite far along. Um, we can do pretty complicated visualizations. This is a re recreation of uh, an example from uh, uh, Beautiful Mackie. Um, you can see you can change the scales to log scales, change the labels, the limits, um, map a certain uh, map to different color palettes, etc. Uh, and we can get even more complicated. We've re-implemented a lot of patchwork, which is a, um, a package for ggplot that allows you to kind of uh, arrange your various plots in a grid. Um, uh, so last year, I, I gave a talk uh, that you can find in the archives uh, where I said that um, we wanted... We, we had a few goals for next year, uh, and I'm going to talk about our progress on them. Um, first one, fix AES operations. So um, this was my first package, uh, and I, I got a little ambitious with my um, type piracy in the initial implementation. Um, so we, <laughs> we implemented uh, a calculation system that uh, aggressively uh, redefined some uh, operations from base. Uh, this uh, was criticized rightly, uh, so we've uh, removed that system, uh, and now we have two options, uh, a, a syntax uh, for functional aesthetics that should be familiar to you if you've used dataframes.jl, uh, as well as a macro-based one that relies on tidier data under the hood. So, check. Good. Um, I also said we wanted to add scale fill and scale alpha, which are 
in existence, so that's good. Uh, you can map your aesthetics to the fill of your various plots, as well as to the alpha or transparency of your, uh, your plots. Last thing was facet grid, uh, which is... Uh, facet grids are an ability to specify rows and columns to split out. Uh, we always had facet wrap working, but grid was a little bit trickier. Uh, that now exists and works, so uh, that's great. Uh, so we hit all our goals. Um, why would you want to use this right now? Um, if you're an R user, um, you get access to Mackie's theming and options, which uh, this is a subjective uh, assessment, but I think they look a lot better than the default things you get in R. You get interactivity in your Pluto notebooks for free uh, with ggplot syntax uh, because of Mackie's mechanisms. This, I, I claim no credit for this uh, benefit. Uh, and if you're like me, you're sick of dealing with the way R handles uh, fonts and plot scaling when it is outputting your plots. Uh, all of that works much better with the Julia backend. So, uh, we're on 0 0.11 now, which is uh, a lot of initial versions. Uh, so we're looking towards a 1.0 release. To get there, we need more complete documentation, some bug fixes from the features that we, uh, we added. Uh, and additionally, we need some more, uh, more geomes, uh, expanding the coverage of ours geomes. Uh, I built a system that allows you to easily add geomes with the geome template. Uh, here's like a, a minimal example that adds support for geome rain cloud. It's pretty simple as long as Mackie supports the plot, uh, but there's some fiddling around the edges to do things like uh, fix the legends and make sure everything works as expected. And some uh, of ours geomes do uh, do calculations under the hood that need to be implemented uh, to get feature parity. Uh, so if you would like to contribute a geome, uh, that's a nice self-contained project. Uh, we'd love to have your contribution. It's, um, there's a issue on our GitHub page with the full instructions on how to do that. Uh, thanks. That's, that's it. Um, nice and quick lightning talk. Um, check out our package on GitHub. Uh, it's at uh, tidierplots.jl under tidierorg. Uh, and if you'd like to talk to me directly, the best way is on Blue Sky these days. Uh, I'm at brandy.pub. Uh, and I'll take any questions you have. Thanks. Thank you so much for the talk. Uh, questions? Hey, Randall. Great talk. Um, thank you for this. Um, I guess the first question I had was just how complicated the plots ecosystem is in Julia. We have plots at JL and, and Maki and various Maki backends. Was it difficult to maybe pick a, that Maki was going to be the package to go with? And have you considered abstracting it further or are you pretty committed to the Maki um, ecosystem? <clears throat> um, it's a great question. Um, basically the choice between backends. Um, so it's almost an accident that we picked Mackie, I guess. Uh, originally, as I wrote the package, um, I was mapping it to Algebra of Graphics um, because it was, uh, AOG is a pretty close analog of how Tidyverse or ggplot works, sorry. Um, but I got frustrated uh, with uh, the flexibility of that package and it just felt like too many layers so I just removed the the, the middleman, uh, took out AOG, and stuck with Mackie. I'm I'm not opposed to having other backends, but uh, I just want to make sure one works correctly first, I guess. So you mentioned uh, like integrating with Pluto. Um, so I was wondering. So I know Maki has its own kind of UI, like buttons and sliders, and then Pluto also has buttons and sliders. So do you get them to like work well together, or do you have any tips on on, on doing that? Um, I haven't personally tried using a tidier plot with um, a slider inside of Pluto of either type, but 
once you uh, kind of tell Julia to make the plot, it just is a Mackie plot. So anything that works with um, anything that works with a Mackie plot will work with this as long as there's no unforeseen complications that I don't know about. Okay. So I have a question, uh, and it's actually inspired by my conversation with Karen Deep yesterday. Uh, and in Tidier, you see a lot of this mixing between like R syntax and then taking some of the Julia like advantages and features. How how do you define how much of R you want to grab, like philosophically in general? Um. I think when we started, we were much more um, strict about this. I think the, the, the guiding principle at the beginning was you should be able to copy and paste your code from R and run it in Julia. That, that's, that was kind of the, the goal. As we've brought more and more things over, uh, as well as brought more people on to contribute, which we greatly appreciate, We've had to make a few compromises just to make it feel like you're still using Julia. Um, so uh, an example is um, your column names in, in tidier plots uh, are symbols, not, not uh, bare references like they would be in R, for example. Or in, uh, in tidier data, you're using macro calls rather than um, functions like you would in R. And uh, there's some... <laughs> allowances for uh, editing, broadcasting behavior, that kind of thing that, that we'd need, uh, that wouldn't be needed in R. But in general, we're trying to make it feel familiar to people who come over from R and want to do data analysis in Julia. Wow, oh, very good, very good. Uh, and on that note, let's thank Randy.